So creating directories and installing dependencies and setting up Git and all that kind of stuff, it's all important and necessary, but it's pretty dull. The more interesting part for me is actually writing some code. And in this case, putting our server online and being able to send in requests and see responses. Now there's actually very little that we need to do to get Koa up and running, especially once we've got all our dependencies sorted out. Just need to start by creating a directory inside the project directory. I'm going to call that source. And in there, I'm going to touch a or create a source server TS file. Now WebStorm is never that keen if you're creating files from the command line. I found a little hack around that is just to list the directory contents and that forces WebStorm to refresh. If you're creating your files inside your IDE, as you probably will be, then that's not that big of a deal. Now rather than sit and watch me type out a load of code, where possible, I'm going to paste in large blocks of code. All of this code is available inside the video write-ups, and then we'll look at each of these blocks in more detail. So at the very top, we've got our import statements. That's pretty much standard. Again, these are all dependencies that we brought in previously. We're going to create a new Koa application. Now, by default, this doesn't do barely anything, as we're about to see. We're going to tell Koa which port to run on. By default, I want to run on port 7654. Pick one at random and just make sure that you target that one when sending in your requests. And we're saying here that if the port is defined on the command line, then take that as priority, otherwise fall back to our default. Now, Koa is made up of middleware and we have to specify which middleware we want to be available for each request. In this case, I'm going to start off by using the body parser middleware. As covered in the dependencies video, what this is going to allow us to do is take the information that's been sent in on a request. So if you're posting in some data, this is the way that we're going to easily be able to get access to that information in JSON format pretty much. Other formats are available, but JSON is probably by far the most prevalent. Now we're going to also use the cores middleware. Again, we covered this in the dependencies video, but we're going to set the origin to star, which is just going to allow any origin. In other words, if we've got our API running on api.domain.com, then if someone else is on like www.example.org or whatever, they can still send in a request to our API without hitting on cores issues, cross origin resource sharing issues, basically. It's an entire topic in itself, but for simplicity, the star is just going to make life so much easier. And unless you've got a reason to lock down your API just to one or a few sites, that's the way that I start off personally. I'm going to use the logger middleware. If you come from something like Symfony, then you'd be used to using like monologue. Well, this is very similar. We're going to be able to see our output on the terminal as stuff comes in and gets sent back out. So with our Koa application instance configured with some middleware, we're going to tell it to listen on the port, whichever port that we specified a little bit earlier. And when it starts up, we're going to just log out the port that it's listening on. In the event of any error, we'll just log out that error object and deal with it as and when. Now we can start this server with npm run start and it starts up, but it doesn't do very much. Now the reason it doesn't do anything is because we don't have any routes configured to be able to send in a request. So let's add one in now. Now to demonstrate this as quickly as possible, what I'm going to do is define my root inside the server.ts file. Now typically this isn't how we will work for the rest of the project. We'll create this stuff in its own file and then make sure to import it. Just for simplicity, I'm going to add in the import statement directly above where we're about to define our new code. Of course, you would normally push this to the top. Once we've imported the router, we can create a new instance of it. And once we've got our instance, we can start doing some definitions. In this case, we're going to add in the slash root and the slash endpoint, which will accept get requests. And when a request comes in on that endpoint, we're going to get back a response with the status of success. Now, by default, that's going to have a 200 status code. We'll see a little later on in this course how we can change that status code as necessary. For the moment, a 200 status code is fine. In order to send something back, we'll need access to the context object. And this is available to us because this router is just another middleware configured in our stack of middleware in our core application. And for every middleware that's called, the context object will be passed in as an argument. Now the context is a wrapper around nodes, request and response objects. And it just provides them as a single object. This is a little bit more of an advanced topic and we don't need to cover that at this stage. 
Okay, so because we've got TS node dev running in the background when we run our npm run start, that's going to automatically restart our web server and recompile our code, which is really nice because otherwise you might have to stop the server manually and do all that by hand every time you make a change. And we should be able to send in requests to our local host on whatever port you've defined, hitting the slash endpoint or the root endpoint but as it stands, we get back a 404 or not found and we can verify this on the terminal, which is nice because we can definitely see that our COA application is receiving an incoming request. But I wanted to highlight something that happens to me far too often and that's that I configure my router, but I forget to use the routes. So again, I've got to tell the middleware stack about these particular routes or this particular route in this case. And once done, we should be able to send in a request and get back the expected response. Everything's looking good. And if we jump across to the terminal, we should be able to see the logged output.